I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. Results of the COVID-19 pandemic have the potential to permanently change liquor licensing in Washington State, with the Senate Labor, Commerce, and Tribal Affairs Committee holding a public hearing on Senate Bill 5394, which would solidify curbside delivery of alcohol, and also holding a public hearing on Senate Bill 5417, which would extend liquor licensing. Uh, as we are all aware, these these uh, businesses have you know, suffered greatly through the pandemic, and uh, this is just a way to try and help them uh, recover. Uh, I think it has, it's a, it's a good approach. Uh, and I think the study that is part of this uh, in answer to some of the questions about the sunset and all of that. So it requires the Liquor and Cannabis Board to look at these privileges that we're granting them and see which works, which doesn't work, which causes a problem. Uh, that's what the study is supposed to be about. Uh, and uh, I think it's a, it's a, a fair and reasonable way of, of helping uh, our restaurants and, and our uh, distilleries and wineries and uh, uh, those businesses uh, kind of recover uh, in a way that, that has already been, uh, they've been under and to some degree for the last few months. Uh, so we just want to extend those privileges and, uh, and have a study done to see uh, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. Since last March, we've been we've built an incredible partnership with the Liquor and Cannabis Board. They've been accessible and have truly done everything in their power to create allowances for licensees that make operating under COVID-19 restrictions possible. We are here today in 99% support of Senate Bill 5417. This bill takes several of the valuable allowances created in this last year and makes them permanent like the increased flexibility of outdoor service and reduced meal requirements. This current bill extends the LCB allowances due to COVID-19 until July 1st, 2023. However, Governor Inslee's roadmap to recovery has extended these allowances indefinitely. This legislation is redundant at least. Youth are very much struggling right now. Anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation are higher than ever. This is even more true for youth of color and those identifying as LGBTQ+. Parents have been drinking to cope with their own stress. On the West Coast, binge drinking has increased 12%, more than any other region in the nation, most of which has been from parents. In Washington, sales of alcohol actually rose 81% from pre-pandemic February to mid-pandemic August, which was according to an LCB revenue report. But I'll also say we also support the many other sales opportunities that this bill puts in place for our restaurants, breweries, um, and other alcohol licensees. Many Washington wineries sell their wine into Washington restaurants, and we do our best to support each other in our communities. We are one hospitality family. And rely on success and continued existence of our collective existence as local businesses in every region of our state. We do understand the intent of the bill and the situation that we're dealing with. Uh, we might be able to get to neutral with a couple changes to the bill. We are concerned with uh, scanning identification. It's too easy for kids to come by fraudulent identification. We believe there should still be a photo ID required and a signature when uh, alcohol is provided. What the pandemic and measures taken to limit the spread of the disease have brought to our doorstep at the LCB is economic hardship closure for so many of our businesses that hold liquor licenses. Department of Commerce data suggests the hospitality and leisure sector of the economy is down 65%. Beginning in March of last year, we received more than 135 requests or inquiries from our licensees seeking help and assistance. Much of the hardship is still with us. So at the request of the governor's office, we have developed agency request legislation to continue to provide support and assistance to some of the most hard hit businesses we regulate. The Senate Law and Justice Committee held a public hearing on Senate Bill 5148, which would make harassment of an election official a Class B felony. 
In addition to reconfiguring voting practices in response to COVID-19 and conducting elections during a global pandemic, election officials and their staff members across the country faced an additional burden this past year in being subjects of threats and harassment. Election officials, those elected to serve their state, county, or local jurisdiction may be subject to pub public scrutiny and unfortunately threats or harassment due to their elected status. As a result, additional protections are already in place for elected officials facing real and actionable threats. Election workers, on the other hand, the people who do the work of registering voters, mailing, processing, and tabulating ballots are not afforded these same protections. However, since October 2020, events across the country have demonstrated not even these administrators are safe from verbal attacks and threats of physical violence. The, the horrors that we've seen um, taken against individuals and our democracy itself. But I, I do want to say it is horrifying to me to know that someone from this state who works in the senator's office had her picture on a website with crosshairs in front of her face, threatening her life. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News covering the 2021 legislative session.